You know what? Are... Change it up a little bit.
Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, and on the earth. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <coughs> angle today. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life, do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Psalm 29, read responsively as indicated. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord, your glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. 
To worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And not like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of ash. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest bare. And the temple of the Lord. All our crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned in the sea forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people a blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke, 
As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Eleven, eleven folks watching and joining us uh, online. So thank you for being with us. If you missed the snow day. Well, we could use your voices for these hymns. The final ones, uh, one a little more familiar, I believe. Well, we got a really uh, curious phone call in the church office this week. Oh, it's all the scuttlebutt here in the church office in St. Albans. Let me tell you. Kelly calls and says, we got a phone call from someone who said, um, first off, let me just pause and say thank you for coming out. I know it was a, a hard to get here for some of you and make it be hard for some of you to get home. So I won't keep you a minute longer than you need to be. But um, just thank you for joining. Thank you for coming to us. All right. So we had a phone call. Someone had called and said, I, I don't know what happened. But um, I was married at St. Albans, but the priest never mailed in the marriage certificate. And uh, the county clerk in Lackawanna County says that our marriage was never filed with the state, with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Kelly calls and says, what did, what did you do? You know. <laughs> <laughs> She's not watching online, so I can say that. What did you do? I go into a panic. Uh, what did I do? And I said, well, what were the name of the, of the couple? And uh, she gives me the name, and I'm thinking, I don't believe I married them. I think I would have known. And I said, Kelly, when were they married? And she said, 1965. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you mean they got married in 1965, and no one has known about it at the county clerk office for 53 years? They've been married, and no one's known? She said, well, what do we do? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. She says, do you think it's still laying around here somewhere? There's plenty of old paperwork laying around here. I said, I don't, I don't think we can find the marriage certificate that should have been mailed in by what would have then been uh, uh, Dick Herschel, I believe, 1965. So she calls the woman back and says, I, I, really, I really am at a loss here. Um, you know, that this was done some time ago, and we don't know where this is. And she says, well, okay, I'll keep digging. And uh, the next day, we get a phone call from the county clerk in Lackawanna County that says, fear not, this happens far more often than you think it does. If you could just send us a photocopy and a notarized letter that says that it's in your records uh, that this marriage occurred and a photocopy of it, that, that should do it, and we can put it in the system retroactively. So we go to the books, and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen these before. But these are all of the records of all of the baptisms and weddings and confirmations that have occurred at St. Albans in our last 100 years. It goes all the way back to 1922. That's the bottom one here. The top one was started in 1982, a year after I was born. 
So these are the records of St. Albans. And, and sure enough, we could go and we looked at it, and there it is. There's the thing. So I write a letter and uh, sign it and uh, get it notarized and said that this wedding did occur here by our records in 1965 and we sent it off. And I got to wondering, is that all it takes to get the court to approve the marriage? And could I take my grandmother's information and say that she had once met John Rockefeller <laughs> and find another priest who would write another letter to send to some court county clerk, and then maybe I could be a Rockefeller here, and you all don't even, yeah. Uh, had us thinking quite a bit. The books here weren't put away for very long. On Saturday morning, we had a baptism, and that was particularly meaningful, not only because today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of Jesus, so it was on the eve of the baptism of Jesus, but all the more because it was our, our first baptism in two years. There are several families who have them kind of in waiting, but they want to do it at a time when we can all gather together and their children can gather together safely, just like we used to for all the kids around the font. They want that for their children. So we wait. We wait a little bit longer. This family was referred to us, uh, a friend of a friend of a friend of Kelly's. They don't live uh, nearby, all that close. Um, they're not Episcopalian. They made it clear they weren't church shopping necessarily, but this was something important to them. So we gathered, six of them, two parent godparents, two godparents, godparent, godparent, the couple, their little boy, Hunter, me, and a whole host, a host of folks on Zoom that were watching. We baptized that child. And it was remarkable. And we stood there afterwards and we took photos you no know, one with the godparents, okay, no one with the parents, and no one with the parents and the priest, no one with the godparents and the parents and the priest. Oh, don't forget the baby. Put the baby in now. Let's get one of <laughs> We took these photos, and then before they left, I invited them over, had them sign the book. And then they went about their day. And said, and Stuart came in and helped clean things back up. But for a moment, for a moment in the life of this church and in the life of that child, we recorded that once, one time, God descended upon St. Albans in Newtown Square and came upon a child named Hunter James and adopted him as his own, guaranteeing him life unending and unshakable love. Not a bad way to spend a Saturday morning. The gospel lesson that we have this morning is Luke's version of the baptism story. And it's a story that should be familiar to you by now. John is out in the wilderness, which is to say the desert near down uh, by where the Jordan River gets close to the Dead Sea. It's sort of anchored on both sides, one by Jericho and the other by Mount Nebo. It's sort of the history of our Old Testament faith in Deuteronomy, the land of milk and honey. Jesus is coming there to meet John, to gather with the crowds and be baptized. People are coming looking to see if John maybe is the Messiah. The crowds were filled with expectation, Luke says. And Luke is very clear, no, I baptize you with water. The one who is coming will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. A, a sort of precursor, a hint at what will come at Pentecost. And Jesus is among the crowd and Jesus is baptized. And the heavens open, the dove descends. And a voice from God says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. It's interesting that this story makes all four Gospels. That's actually a little more rare than you would think. Most Gospels sort of admit one thing or another. Mark's version of this is sort of quintessential Mark. It's very short. It reads like, a, like two or three text messages. That's about the length. I mean, how was the baptism? Fine. And we call that the Gospel of Mark. Luke's version uh, is a little curious. I told you last week we should always be suspicious when the lectionary cuts out a few sentences, cuts out a few verses, and this gospel lesson is no different. There's a few verses that are missing. It says that John is down there with uh, Jesus, and that John, uh, be, this is one of the things that irritates Herod, and one of the reasons why Herod executes John. And then Jesus is baptized in the River Jordan. The way that Luke writes it, we're not entirely sure or at least the door is left open for the idea that maybe John wasn't there to baptize Jesus. 
but we can play with that another day. For his part, John's gospel tells all of the details except for the actual baptism itself. You have John the Baptist, you have Jesus, you have the voice, the dove, you have all of it. There's actually no mention of the baptism. It's just sort of inferred. But suffice it to say, all four Gospels tell the same story, which tells us that this is important. It tells us, not too dissimilarly from what we do in that register, that there was a moment in time, a moment in time which captured the imagination of all four Gospel writers, a moment of initiation for the one who was and is and is to come. And here we pause a little bit and open this up theologically because it helps us understand what comes next in the next few weeks to come, next few weeks to come. But Jesus, we can say, it is this story in which Jesus learns his own true divine identity. It has been given to us, of course, certainly to Mary in the message of the angel Gabriel, and hinted at in other parts, at least in Luke's gospel, hinted at in other parts when Jesus is 12 years old and he's in the temple and they can't find him. And he says, well, surely you know to look for me in my father's house. But I mean, 12 year olds are funny characters. There's this moment, however, at which a 30 year old stands in the river Jordan and before a crowd, the heavens are open and a dove descends and a voice says, this is my son the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And from then on out, Jesus knows fully who he is and can say as he does continually in John's gospel, the father and I are one. But that's the theology. Most of what I find when I read this text is the joy, the joy that is present in between the father and the son God, God in the heavens is so delighted by this moment that he is willing to pop through the curtain, so to speak, to rip open the sky and to speak down in ways that God doesn't do anymore. To speak down and say, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. I am so overjoyed. I just, I just had to let you know. And that joy makes for a moment that endures. It endures forever. It radiates out. It radiates out in the sense that we uh, get to remember that every year in this place, at the feast of the baptism of Jesus. It radiates out in Jesus' ministry. It radiates out in the, the history of all the people in this world who have been baptized. It radiates out when we baptize someone here, baptizing them into that same joy that radiated yesterday. And we baptize Hunter James into that same joy. And we write it down. We write it down in old books. And maybe for you, you don't remember your baptism. <laughs> That's probably the case for most of us, particularly those who are baptized as babies. We only have stories of it. Maybe a, a, a candle that's sort of dented somewhere in a drawer. But know that even though they're in our old books, for God... For God, they are still as fresh as they were yesterday, as if they happened yesterday. You have to imagine there is a picture of you in your baptismal gown, a yellowed Polaroid on God's refrigerator, still there. <laughs> there is a picture of you and your family and the priest, and now a family with the priest and the godparents, and one with the priest and the godparents and the siblings. That photo is on God's dresser. And he looks at it every night when he brushes his teeth, and he says, I'm so, I'm so pleased. That moment at which you were folded into the household of God is as fresh for God as it was the day that it happened. And let me tell you, that's a real thing. I'm not saying this in theory. When I, when I was thinking about this sermon text, I actually went back and looked at the books. David and Maria, Zach and Matthew were in this book. There's a point in time at which God wrote that down. Well, we wrote that down. But for God, it's fresh. Their photos are on God's refrigerator. Stephanie, there's a whole bunch of jaquettes in here. And Herbster's too. <laughs> Herbster's too. You're on God's refrigerator. Sydney Stewart, Julian, and Charlie are in here. They're in here. Bonnie and Ed, so too did I find Peter and Laura. They're in this book. I'm looking on this side. 
I don't think anybody's made the book on this side yet. <laughs> Lori, you're watching online. You're in this one. You're in this one right here. There was a moment in time in which God descended upon all of you. We wrote that down. And it sits in a yellowed book in our office. But for God, that moment was just as fresh uh, and still is just as fresh as if it happened yesterday. If we treat that moment like it was something that occurred in the past, then we are prone to forget the joy that God still has, the God that for God is still fresh. We will be prone to forget the vows that we made or were made on our behalf that day. But if we see them as something new in living, and if we live into those moments like Jesus does, as the beginning of life anew, then our baptisms are not just a moment, they are a mandate. Not just a moment, but a mandate. A lifetime of joy undergirded by the vows that we made that each of you made, or were made on our behalf. Won't you stand? If we do this, uh, if we do this the right way, we can forego the Nicene Creed. <laughs> so, for you at home or watching, it's I have the Nicene Creed in here, but sometimes the bulletin comes together before the sermon does. So I, why don't you all open to uh, page 304. Three oh four. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will of God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will of God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will of God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will of God's help. Let us pray. All praise and thanks to you, most merciful Father for adopting us as your own children, for incorporating us into your holy church, and for making us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints and light. May the vows we make this day be as fresh as they were at the day of our baptism. And may the joy that you continue to hold for each of us be made anew in us this day. Amen. Amen. Pray that Christ may be seen in the life of the church. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May your love for our brothers and sisters in Christ be strengthened by your grace. Jesus, Lord of the church, us. you have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts so that our lives will reflect your holiness. 
Jesus, Lord of the Church. In your mercy and hear us. You have called us to be a light to the world, so that those in darkness come to you. May your life shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. Jesus, Lord of, your, of the Church. In your mercy, hear us. You have called us to be members of your body, so that when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress, remembering especially Lane, Sam, Sue, Jay, Jane, Jim, Paul, Mike, Lisa, Kevin, Mary Jane, Mary Lou, Lauren, Jane, Richard, Noel, Stephen, Gary, Sarah, Linda, Lisa, Millie, Robert, Ryan, Sarah, Kim, Martha, Alexa, Holly, Doug, Matt, Ed, Tom, Mary Ann, Alan, Robbie, Fred, Barbara, William, Suzanne, Debbie, and those whose names we now offer silently and aloud. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy appear us. You have called us to be the bride where you, Lord, are the bridegroom. Prepare us for the wedding feast, where we will be united with you forever. We pray for those who have gone before us, remembering especially they and the 12 Philadelphians who died this week in a row house fire. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy appear us. Jesus, Lord of the Church, you have called us into fellowship with all your saints. We unite our prayers with theirs and ask for grace to serve you with joy where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for all eternity. <clears throat> Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have not done. That. We have we do not loved, loved you with our whole heart, we have we not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we go to the sorry and have no other repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be the of your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace, peace. Peace. Good. Well, good morning. Good morning. No snow day for you. Let me tell you. Uh, we're glad you're here. Obviously, there's no coffee hour just for another few weeks. We, uh, the guidance that we had set in place last week was sort of uh, ratified by the bishop uh, later this week, earlier, later this week, later in the week. So uh, that'll be off probably through January, uh, definitely through January, and probably into February, uh, just depending on how things go. But of course, I can't tell you how that will work out. Um, but let me say that this is a season of, of new resolutions, New Year's resolutions, right? So a season of new beginnings. And in that sense, I want to invite you to a few things. One, I want to invite you to uh, join us on Tuesday morning at 7.30 for our Bible study. Uh, this is a group that's been meeting for a long time, but there's been new faces that have come and gone. And uh, new faces that have stayed, let me say. New faces that are there. Uh, you do not, it's not a group that is there to impress each other with how much we know about what we're reading, but rather to enjoy each other's company uh, and to uh, see what the text has to tell us. Uh, the conversation is always, always worthwhile. Um, it's, it's just an hour that anchors my week now, and I'm not a morning person, so let me tell you, that says something. 
<laughs> but uh, I had learned that I can uh, roll out of bed uh, pretty close to 7.30 and make a cup of coffee and be there uh, on camera and, uh, and have a wonderful opportunity to grow with all of you. So I invite you to that. It's a lot of fun, 7.30 uh, in the morning on Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday. Uh, even the Tuesdays you think we would take a day off, right, Ed? <laughs> so, uh, the second thing is our Wednesday evening Holy Eucharist. Uh, we took a little bit of a pause through the holidays, but we're back. So I invite you to that. It's a wonderful way to punctuate your week. We get we meet in here on Wednesday at 5.30, somewhere between 4 and 12 of us. And uh, it's, a, it's just a really nice, intimate, casual celebration of the Holy Eucharist, a reminder of God's presence in our week. Uh, so I invite you to that too. Tuesdays at 7.30, Wednesdays at 5.30. Uh, everything we do in this church, but especially on Sunday morning, requires a set of volunteers. Uh, we call those guilds, typically. So we have an usher's guild, uh, and a flower guild, and an altar guild. But uh, there's about seven of them. Ushers, intercessors, readers, flower guild, altar guild, choir, acolytes. That's that, seven. Um, a lot of times at St. Albans, things just sort of come together. They tend to work themselves out, they, even if we have folks signed up or we can't schedule folks. Um, but we've noticed since we've been back in person is that's not always the case. Uh, that sometimes we're missing people. And so uh, let me just say, this is a wonderful time uh, to take on a new ministry on our, on our corporate worship together. Whether you want to read or sing in the choir or you want to acolyte or be an usher, uh, we could really use your help. Um, uh, we could really use your help. And that, that, that sharing of the work makes it, um, actually makes it more meaningful for all the rest of us who are in it. Because we know that that work now is something we do together. Um, and we don't worry about whether or not we're gonna have an usher or a reader. Uh, so, so I invite you to consider that. All of those are open to you. They have been for a long time, but they, they need you now. So give that good thought. The second uh, offering, or fourth I should say, in the last, um, is to uh, consider um, a New Year's resolution of, of regular giving to St. Albans through an annual pledge. Many of you pledge uh, regularly. For that, we're very grateful. But we're still in the middle of our pledge campaign. Uh, and, and I invite you to do this to, if you have not done so already. There, there's no amount that is uh, too small. But, but the reason I'm emphasizing this uh, is because it makes for a very good spiritual discipline. Because you then begin to, uh, you feel a certain sense of investment in the well-being of your own community, uh, own spiritual community. And like I said, there's no, no amount that's too small. So, so I encourage you to take on the spiritual practice of, of pledging. Because the spiritual practice of pledging commits you to something. And it obligates you. And it, and it creates a regular pattern in which you feel a certain sense of ownership and stewardship. That's where we get the word from. Stewardship of this community. So uh, the more that participate in that, the more buy-in we all feel. Uh, and it's a, it's a great joy. So think of that not as a, uh-oh, it's that time of the year again, uh, like NPR when you turn that part off. Um, <laughs> but let me just say, think of this instead as a, as, a, as a heartfelt invitation to grow in your faith, because it, it does. It just has an impact on you uh, that's really strong. Now walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Thank you.
sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our mothers and fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, of Isaac and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at the work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Lord, you know to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, the Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the feast. Hallelujah.
Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. Be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.